So I want to talk more about limits. Hopefully at this point you've watched the introduction to limits video. And in this video, I just want to do a couple examples and I also want to lay out sort of a sy systematic way that we can go about um, solving limits, all right? So just a quick reminder, when you see something like this, the, it's read as the limit as x approaches c of the function is equal to L, or at the limit of, you can also say it as the limit of f as x approaches c is equal to L, L and c being some constant, typically, all right? Um, so here are the three different methods that you can use to evaluate limits. So the first thing you always try is, get a little line here, direct substitution. Okay, so you try direct substitution first, and you do that because it's possible that the function that you have in front of you, that you're trying to evaluate the limit of, exists at that value. We don't do a lot of problems like that because they're not that interesting, but that's what you should try first. Second thing you should try is algebraic manipulation, okay? Algebraic manipulation. And you do that because you might be able to do some sort of algebraic manipulation to the function and then use direct substitution and evaluate the limit in that way. And you do that for a couple of reasons. One, um, it gets you good at doing algebraic manipulation. So then you do direct substitution after that. Um, it gets you better at direct at algebraic manipulation. The second reason that you would do that is because there's a non-calculated portion of um, the AP test. And the third reason is, is that it will just give you an intuition and help you develop an intuition for how these functions work without jumping right to your graphing calculator. All right. And if neither of those work, then you can go ahead and graph the function. And when you are evaluating limits, you're using the graph, but sometimes I see students rely too heavily on the graph. The table is really going to be your friend. So I would say when you, and as part of th three here, graphing, there's two things that you can leverage to help you figure these problems out. Use a table and you can also use um, the trace feature, okay? Alright, but the table is a great method. Um, you can suppose you're evaluating a limit at 1. You can plug in x values um, like 0 0.9, 0 0.99, 0 0.999 and see what the y values are doing as you get closer to 1. Because if you've gotten to this point, then that's because Direct substitution work. Plugging in one to the table will give you um, an error in the y's. Okay, so let's do a couple examples here. All right, let's look at limit as x approaches one of the function x minus one over x squared minus one. All right, so step one is to try direct substitution. You plug in one, one minus one on top is zero, zero in the numerator, it's not the worst thing ever, but we check the denominator, plug in one, and I get one minus one is zero. So I have a zero divided by zero situation. I can't um, divide by zero in the real number system. It doesn't make sense to do that. Um, excuse me, you might even say it's impossible. So I go to step two, step two is algebraic manipulation. The question is, what can I do with this function to simplify it. And what you should think to do, hopefully, is um, is factor. Now that should at least be always an option on the table that you check. Can I factor? You can. The top is, is um, already prime, I guess. It's unfactorable, but the bottom is not. So we can change this to the limit as x approaches 1 of x minus 1 divided by x minus 1 x plus 1. And right here, we can see that I have a factor of x minus 1 on top, and I have a factor of x minus 1 on the bottom. Those two things simplify to be 1 over 1. Okay? So what I end up with then is limit as x approaches 1 of 1 divided by x plus 1. Now after every step or each step of algebraic manipulation, you should check, can I use direct substitution at this point? So we'll check right now. And we see that if I use direct substitution, I'll get 1 divided by 1 plus 1, which is just 1 over 2. Okay, so 
Now that I'm evaluating the limit, I can write, I can drop the limit notation because I'm actually evaluating it now. I'm plugging in one and I'm getting one over one plus one, which is one over two. Okay, so that's what my limit is. And that's an important thing to take away from this lesson is that you, when you're doing algebraic manipulation, you maintain the limit notation in your work until you actually plug one in, okay? Otherwise, you've got limits equaling things that are not limits, but you didn't actually mean to get rid of the limit notation. Dropping that notation implies you're evaluating the limit. And you don't want to do that until you're actually evaluating the limit, okay? So let's get rid of that. All right, let's do another one here where we have, um, All right, so we have limit as x approaches zero, one over two plus x minus a half over x. We plug in zero, we see that the function, um, that that will create a divide by zero error, so direct substitution is um, not an option. So then what we need to do is think of algebraic ways we can manipulate this function. And really our only tool in the toolkit here is to find a common denominator in the numerator and hope that we can simplify it down to something where ultimately I could plug zero in. All right, so let's check and see what happens. If I want a common denominator in the numerator, then what I'm gonna do is look at each denominator. This one has a two plus X. This one has a two. So this one, this denominator of two needs a two plus X in it, so I can give it a two plus X, but I can't just multiply by two plus X all willy nilly like. So on top, I also have to multiply by two plus x. This is effectively multiplying by one, okay? Here, I'm gonna multiply by two over two because this denominator needs a two, doesn't have one, all right? So, what I end up with, marker straightened out here, is I have the limit as x approaches zero of two minus two plus x, this is all in the numerator, divided by the denominator, which is two times two plus x, that was our common denominator, all divided by x, okay? So we have a complex fraction. Um, not particularly beautiful to deal with here, but let's keep simplifying and see what happens. So I've got the limit as x approaches zero, two minus two, that's zero, minus x. So on top, I'll have negative x divided by two times two plus x, all of that divided by x. Let's move up here. Still have the limit as x approaches zero. Now the question is, what do I do from here? Now, the step I'm gonna show you, you don't necessarily need to do each time, but it does make the work a little more clear and easier to understand. This fraction here, I'm gonna take out in front, okay? And here's why this works. Here's what I'm thinking. If I have seven over x, I can rewrite that as seven times one over x. Now this isn't exactly what I have. In place of seven, I have this ugly fraction, but the same principle applies. So I'm gonna rewrite this as negative x over two times two plus x times one over x. All right, and if I write it like that, then I can rewrite the whole thing again. Again, this step you don't need to show necessarily, but you can rewrite it like this, negative x divided by two x times two plus x. And what I see here is that I have an x over an x, which will simplify to one over one. So I end up with this limit as x approaches zero of negative one divided by two times two plus x. Okay. And now I try direct substitution to see if that will work. And I plug in zero, I find that it will in fact work. So now I'm gonna use, I'm, I'm actually evaluating the limit now. I'm gonna drop the limit notation. And so I get this, negative one over two times two plus zero. That's negative one over four. 
Okay, so that limit is negative one fourth using algebraic manipulation, right? Again, you're gonna shy away from using the algebra. You're gonna to wanna to jump straight to your calculator. Please, please resist that temptation. Uh, tackle these algebraically if possible. Um, I've had a lot of students come back and tell me, go to college and come back and tell me that they're not, you, not allowed to use their calculator in their college math classes. So it's really a good, um, good idea to try and attack these algebraically at first. All right, and I think that's where I wanna end this video. Um, with those analytic or algebraic methods for evaluating limits. Um, in the next video, we're going to talk about right and left-hand limits, one-sided limits, right? And that's it.